I, okay, let's see how much there's to talk about. So this is the portfolio I applied with. It's like two years ago now. I don't know if you guys get the feeling when you look back at like your work two years ago, you like slightly cringe, but I'll try to uh, try to hold it in. So yeah, I was from TechStream and Daniels. Um, and so my portfolio is, well, at that time, it's it was six projects. My thought process for the the order of the projects, essentially, I, I started with the strongest one. And then the ones in the middle are kind of like, he, he, like the, pro the other stuff. And then so like the strongest one at the front and then the other, the second strongest one, like at the at the end. And then actually at the very end is like my professional works. But I, I imagine that's just kind of like they don't really look at that that much. So it's mainly my two um, tech studios. And so if you guys are, I would say like anybody from TechStream, I know the tech studios now are kind of a little bit Russian roulette, kind of like you don't know which one you'll get which year, depending on which year you you do it. Um, but I would say like the tech studios for me, like was tricky to present um, in portfolio form because I found that a lot of times like uh, a lot of it was actually like you have to do the studio work but then when you actually get to the um, presentation of it like I, I found that I was often missing uh, missing steps for for the reader to like fully understand kind of like what was kind of going on so in this project um, it was a group project with me it's just me and Chris Kang I don't know if you guys know of Chris but he he goes to ICD now um, Stuttgart blue uh, but he's really he's really smart. Um, and so we worked on this project together. Basically, it was about um, using topos like topology optimization to basically do form finding based on like loads, supports, and like engineering stuff. Uh, he did most of that part. Uh, while I worked on um, the studio was based in sort of like material exploration. So I worked on essentially fabricating concrete panels or a way to fabricate concrete panels. This was a this is a tricky one because this happened like. This is like when COVID happened. So like the studio was like in person until Sunday, we were like, okay, don't come back to school. So basically we made this sort of machine um, to fabricate concrete panels. And I, I think this is like kind of the tricky part for, I don't know about your tech studios now, but this, this will be the tricky part where you have to first build or like do whatever the work is and then you have to represent it, which is like a, a second step. Um, Whereas I feel like if you took a, if you take like a design studio per chance, like um, usually they always, they always ask for representation as part of the deliverables already. So you kind of already have it, but sometimes you might feel like, I, I felt like at least in this project, I was like, how do I describe like some of the things or some of the processes that um, we were trying to basically work with in the project. And so like, it, it basically always ends up as a sort of like step diagram of some sort where it's like, oh, you do this and then this and then this. Um, and then like you show off the process, but I kind of expected that like the, whoever's looking at my portfolio wouldn't actually read into this page because it's just so many steps. Um, but, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but yeah, like it, I think that's something that you guys might come across with in terms of like representing your projects for some of the text stream projects. And then this is just, Arc 280, um, I think you guys are probably pretty familiar with like some of these works. A lot of times I think the project, it's like the meat of the project in days is not really the final product, but the um, the process and kind of like the, the logic to getting it. So I think it's important that you guys show off that, that sort of like thinking in your portfolios. Um, and then this is 201. I don't think there's too much to be said here. It's just like, this one was uh, the Miles Gertler course, um, urbanism in the military orbit. And this was also a group project. I think like a big part of the group projects is that you have to make sure that you, you do say like which parts you are involved in um, or like show off mostly the parts that you are involved in. Um, and so this one was looking at Yemen and like arms sales, uh, US arms sales that somehow uh, end up in Yemen. Um, and kind of the politics around that. And so, yeah. And then this was the other, so the first project was my strongest project. And then this is like the second strongest. So it's the other tech studio where we basically looked at um, the Hoberman sphere. I think maybe some of you guys have done this before, but it was, it's like the kinetic architecture studio. And 
kind of looking through recreating that mechanism and then repurposing that mechanism to something else. Um, yeah, and so I think usually for these projects, like they they ask you to make like some sort of uh, final like presentation where you're like, oh, like I imagine this can be used in the forest as like a camping uh, pod or something, which was our imagined use, but. Um, you know, I, I don't think that part is that that important. Like the more important part is like the the process work and like the national mechanism, right? That's like what you're trying to sell them. Um, yeah, and then I think it's just professional work. Like I I interned somewhere in Singapore, and that's basically it. Um, at least that's my that's my tips for you guys. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Yeah, thank you, Zen, for presenting that. It looks really good. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can send them in the chat and we will ask. But I also want to know, like, was there a lot of thought that went behind, like, the amount of color in your portfolio? Like, did you want it to be mostly black and white or was it just kind of how your projects ended up being? Or did you alter them to make it more cohesive? Um, I will, you know, I could, I could be like, oh, intentionally black and white, but no, I, I'm pretty bad with color. Uh, it's not, I, I would say like, I'm not very artsy, like that's not my strong suit. Whereas like this kind of stuff is more my my strong suit. So I just kept it black and white to kind of simpli simplify things for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think just like black and white photographs sometimes, like, you know, you just mess with the contrast, mess with the brightness a bit and they, they look nice. Um, they just look nice. So I know like some people probably have like stronger, I think aesthetic sense, but that's just, uh, not my vibes so yeah. <laughs> that's fair and then I also want to know um did you intentionally add a lot of models because those are like your strength or I guess like did you alter your coursework to like help it fit your portfolio or did you just kind of put what you had like did you make more drawings or less drawings or show more models or oh yeah mm. yeah that was actually a really tricky process like I know I had to hunt for I had to hunt for a lot of things afterwards, especially if you guys do group work. Like, I think you'd be like, oh, like, can you send me this afterwards? But in terms of the models, like, really, it's. I would say that this portfolio, in terms of like how I'm representing these projects, is not necessarily the most comprehensive and logical way of presenting the project. It's actually more of like the most aesthetically appealing um and like easy to easy to digest version of it so you know like if I actually wanted to describe this project like I wouldn't do it this way like a lot of the things the way I presented certain things like these uh, like a lot of this stuff actually didn't make it into the final project um but they ended up being the best photographs <laughs> you know what I mean so like I, I I'm thinking of trying to empathize with like um whoever's viewing my portfolio like I imagine this person's like looking through like multiple portfolios mm -hmm. um and you know like some of the slides I mentioned earlier I think uh like some of the slides like this one like dude no one's gonna read this okay I don't want to say they're not gonna read this like somebody probably will read this but I imagine that somebody who's looking through multiple portfolios there's like you know there's like oh god like what the heck is this like I don't want to you know so um yeah a, a lot of stuff is just more for aesthetic appeal and like ease ease of digestion rather than i would say like very co like comprehensively explaining everything okay yeah all right that's fair um i guess i also want to ask i'm pretty sure you didn't take a gap here between your undergrad and masters and you just went straight into your masters um I guess, how did you balance coursework with the whole application process and making your portfolios? And Because it, it's a lot <laughs> to do all at once. Yeah, what did I do my last year? Um, my last year, I worked on thesis, which actually well, didn't, didn't make it into the portfolio because of time constraint, right? Like at that stage, if you guys are doing thesis now, like you're still probably working on, yeah, it's fall, so you're working on the research part of it. Um, so you don't really have anything of, of too much substance to present. Um, I would say, I don't know, it's hard to say because I think it's a little different for me because my, my year, my fourth year was online. So 
in a way like it was difficult but it was also like easier in some sense where like I, I just had more time to like you know I don't have to actually go to school I just like wake up and just like do some stuff and so it, it was easier in that sense as well balancing it I uh man I don't know I like I think once you get to fourth year you're kind of just like I mean probably gonna graduate and like you know at that point it's like oh my grades are either pretty good enough and like I can probably keep them up that like uh, a grad program would be okay with it or I'm like oh I am just like my grades are super bad now and like what do I like you know like you're three you're three years in and then you're in your fourth year like you do the math man like the average it doesn't suddenly increase right like you, you know even if you score 100 on everything it doesn't suddenly go up if you have like so uh sorry I think I, I like forgot your question but <laughs> I, <laughs> no you did a pretty good job answering I was mostly just asking how you balanced applying while you did school but you did answer it so you're good yeah I, I actually it feels like so long ago so I, I don't remember I just like called up my prof so I was like hey like I think that was important like I talked to my profs about like what um what life was like for them like all my references I, I basically had like a little zoom call with them I was like hey like you know what are you doing now and like how'd you get there and uh you know how much are they paying you uh sometimes I got an answer but and, and then you know like you know what is the life like because I, I guess that's what I was curious about but yeah okay that was really helpful for me all right, well, thank you so much for sharing your portfolio and answering all those questions. Um, I don't see any in the chat. If you guys have any questions for Zen, please yeah. speak. Um, otherwise, if we don't get questions in like a few minutes, feel free to go make your Halloween costume. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would say like a few things, just like, you know, definitely get other people to check your portfolio over because if it's like kind of like cover letters and stuff, like if someone sees like spelling mistakes, et cetera, like they'll just be like, okay like you clearly don't care so like why should I care about your work um yeah. so it, it's like little stuff like that um but also that if you are really anxious about like grad applications like a lot of my friends um the year I applied like didn't get in and they were like super bummed out about it but a lot of them are doing like really cool stuff as well or they took a gap year and they went to go work and like hey what can I say they have money and I don't so I don't know who's the real winner here um but it's not it's not like the be all and end all if you don't get into grad school so like have a plan b and you'll be okay yeah.